A group of entitled Karens threaten me and a co-worker after they get caught red-handed trying to steal from our store. And I've honestly never been more freaked out by an interaction with a customer in my life. Here's what happened. So I finally feel comfortable talking about this, so here we go. Five Karens decided to threaten me and a co-worker with violence because we caught them attempting to steal. I was quite shaken up by the incident, but I am doing a lot better now. For a bit of context, I work at a bargain store in the United Kingdom. Karens are a normal occurrence, but this one is the worst I've ever had. I was on the customer checkouts, serving a lady all her Christmas presents, when I heard a commotion down my line. Five Karens were shouting at my co-worker because we were watching them. They had a trolley with full bags, which did kind of look like they were full of our products. They just kept going on and on, to the point where other customers were looking really disturbed. Well, that's right about when I decided to jump in and ask them to leave the store for harassment of a co-worker. And let's just say they definitely did not like that very much. They then turned on me, saying they were going to drag me out to the parking lot and knock me out. I then made the decision to press the panic alarm and call my manager because I felt threatened for my own safety. My manager came over and dealt with them, making the decision to just serve them and get them out. According to her, she had to make that decision fast as I was a ticking time bomb for a panic attack. And for a bit of context there, I do have an anxiety disorder. I only noticed this when I look back on the CCTV, but one of them got behind me, and that seriously could have been so dangerous. One of the Karens also had a four-year-old boy with them, and had the audacity to say to me that I've traumatized him, and that we're discriminating them for being common. But like, seriously? No, you did that yourselves. As soon as these entitled Karens left, I got off the register and had a massive breakdown in the staff room. I know the holiday season means tempers flare, but that was way too much. We discussed it in the back and the only reason they kicked off was because they were gonna steal and they had a guilty conscience. Now, sadly to say, they had no justice served other than the fact that they left the shop and they didn't get banned or anything like that. So please, just when you're doing your Christmas shopping, please do not be a jerk. And if someone asks to check your bags, please just comply. I mean, seriously, if you're not guilty, then what in the world do you have to hide? That last comment really is quite annoying because I totally understand where you're coming from, but also, I'm not a thief. I'm not someone who goes into these big stores or even these small stores and decides to go shoplifting instead of being honest and just buying the products I want to get. So yeah, it's kind of one of those necessary evils nowadays that has only come up because of actual thieves that ruin it for the rest of us. It's the reason why you probably can't go out of any, like, major store without them being like, okay, I need to look at your receipt. It's like, really? I literally just bought all of this. Where did I get all of these bags to bag my own items? Like, are you kidding me right now? I know it's all like security theater and stuff like that, but it's really annoying to have to be subjected to that. And it all comes back to Karens like this in this story. These people 100% were going to try and steal. They were angry and they were aggressive. And I know when I've worked customer service, that was always such a massive red flag for when I was dealing with a customer. If they're hyper aggressive and really angry with you, then honestly, they're probably up to something bad. And that just means I'm going to be on high alert for whatever they're planning. So truly to the original poster, I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. It's not fair for you to have to be put in that position, especially when you're just trying to do your job. And you've got it right. Working during the holidays, especially during Christmas, is already stressful enough. And the last thing that you need is a group of Karens shouting and threatening you, all because you tried to get them to quiet down. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My husband been as angry with me because I didn't follow the tradition that his family set about when it comes to cooking for Thanksgiving. And now I'm being called a jerk, with my husband claiming that I offended my mother-in-law by not helping out when it comes to cooking Thanksgiving dinner. Here's what happened. So to start things off, I'm a 27-year-old female and I've been dating my 34-year-old husband since 2018. We got married three years into our relationship and things have been going extremely well. We have spent four years of Thanksgivings at my parents' house, and this was the first time we chose to spend it at his parents' house. When we got there, my mother-in-law, her mother, and both my sister-in-laws were in the kitchen all helping each other with the food. Me and my husband went in there and talked for a bit. My mother-in-law then asked me if I would like to help out, and I said, well, not right now. Would it be okay if I came back soon and helped out in a bit? Well, she very nicely said that it was totally fine, and told me and my husband to get something to drink and hang out with the men and the kids. It was right then that my husband gave me a nasty 
nasty look. He said to me, you're not even going to help? His mother said they were more than enough people and she just asked me in case I wanted to help with the cooking, but that they all managed just fine. He grabbed a beer for only himself and went to the living room and I did the same and followed after. I ended up helping them with setting up everything on the table as I wanted to help out just a bit. His mother did not ask me to do this and neither did my sister-in-law's. Dinner went extremely well. We talked a lot and I really like his family. When my husband and I got in the car, he started mumbling really angrily at me. I asked him about three times what he was saying before he finally blew up at me. He told me that it is their tradition that the women are in the kitchen cooking, that I disrespected his mom in her own house by acting so entitled. We ended up having an argument about this whole thing and he has not stopped insisting that his mother was in fact very offended by this. I have not talked to her about this. I mean, she did not tell me anything about being offended either, but I know his mom is a really nice woman who would never want to say anything bad about someone. So I am starting to think that maybe I really disrespected his mom and she just doesn't have the heart to tell me. So am I the jerk for not following their traditions? I feel like I was a jerk because helping out would not have been that hard. And had I known the outcome, I would have just stayed there and helped out. What should I do? I'm going to be completely honest and say that I don't think you're the jerk here. First of all, if this is such a big deal, why did your husband not explain this to you before you went to their house? Like, why is he getting mad at you not knowing something that was never explained to you? He's getting upset as if this is somehow like expected, but it's really funny how he's acting like he's never been to any of your Thanksgiving dinners. And I'm assuming that he's seen that this isn't the case. Like there's no like standard of like, oh, the women have to cook the Thanksgiving dinner. Like if it seriously was that important, he should have said something from the beginning just to try and mitigate any kind of negative response. Also, I think your husband's completely full of it. He is acting like his mother is so offended as if what you did is so irreparable that there's literally no good excuse for it. But seriously, if it's that big of a deal, why were you not told ahead of time? Like you can't read your husband's mind. Is he being serious right now? Like how could you possibly know that this is something that your family does? You were not being entitled. I don't think you disrespected his mom. And if anything, this is a really weird gender stereotype that I just don't subscribe to in the slightest. Like I know when my family has Thanksgiving dinner, both my mom and my dad, as well as my brother-in-laws and sisters are all involved when it comes to like getting stuff done. Nobody's sitting on the sideline and being like, well, I'm a man. I'm not going to do any Thanksgiving cooking. It's like, no, if you know what you're doing, then come along and help out. But for you to be expected to do that all because you're a woman, that's like really weird to me. That's like some 1950s stuff that just doesn't stand up today. So no, I don't think you're the jerk at all. I think your husband is overreacting and blowing this way out of proportion. And if you really want to get to the bottom of this, you could talk to his mom and really just straight up ask her if you offended her in some way without realizing it. Because right now your husband is being unreasonable and I don't blame you for being confused as well as upset at his behavior. Am I the jerk for leaving Thanksgiving early? All because my partner's creepy brother was also there. Here's what happened. So I'm a 25 year old female and my partner is 26 years old and we've been friends for a few years and started dating more seriously earlier this year. This was the first time he's invited me to Thanksgiving. He called it a Friendsgiving when he pitched it. His parents who I adore were hosting it but it was mostly their friends and his family. Not really any extended family as he put it. So I guess for whatever reason I assumed his brother wouldn't be there. I've tried really hard to be nice to his brother. He has always creeped me out with staring and hovering and stuff like that but he reads as neurodivergent and I think he has ADHD but it seems a lot more severe to me. But you know what? I've tried to be nice. Then last year my partner asked if his brother could come with us and our friends on our big summer renaissance fair road trip and I then told him how I felt uncomfortable around his brother and I didn't want him to spoil this trip. Well, my partner tried to assure me that he wouldn't do that, but guess what? He kind of did. I felt like I was babysitting a little kid for most of the trip. It was a few weeks after that that my partner posted something on Instagram and his brother commented. Now, when I went to check out his Instagram, as one might do, I saw that he had drawn a bunch of sketchy pictures of me while we were on our trip. And I think you understand what I mean by sketchy. And I mean, this was definitely very obviously me without any clothes on. I brought it up to my partner and he mostly seemed to brush it off. I didn't exactly say how uncomfortable it made me, but I also don't feel like I should have had to spell it out to him. I've been pretty clear that I don't want to be around his brother after that. I've had dinner with him and his parents occasionally, but his brother usually isn't even there or stays up in his room. He might come down to get a plate or whatever we're eating and pass 
pass by, but he never stays. And that's because I thought my partner conveyed to him that I'm not okay with him being around. So anyways, Friendsgiving is today. And I was honestly having a blast. I got up early and spent all morning making side dishes. I was enjoying spending time with our friends and his parents. And then his brother turns up, with him getting sat at the table with us right next to me. It isn't even that he was there, but that my partner didn't feel inclined to warn me or make sure that we weren't sitting together or anything like that. I feel terrible now, like I kind of overreacted in some kind of way, but I just got up and I left. I went over to his code and got the keys, and when he asked what I was doing, I might have raised my voice a bit, and I told him he could either spend time with me or his creepy brother, which was maybe not the best thing to do in front of his whole 20-person gathering, and we also drove together, so I kind of left him stranded, but he was at his parents' house with his side of the family, and we do live nearby, so someone probably gave him a ride home. I then went to my sister's house about 40 minutes away, and he hasn't tried to call me or text me. So honestly, did I overreact in this situation? Am I the jerk here? What should I do? This is unbelievable to me. Not because of your reaction, I think you underreacted if anything, but seriously, your partner did nothing to stop his creepy brother from sitting next to you, or even just being around you in the first place? This guy had sketchy pictures of you on his Instagram, ones that he drew himself that definitely looked like you. Like, I don't know about you, but in my opinion, that should have been the end of the story when it comes to you dealing with that guy's brother. Your partner should have confronted his brother and said, hey, what is the deal with this? Are you kidding me right now? And then demanded that he take that down. And it's seriously so awful because you can see so many instances where your partner just straight up ignored you and said, nah, it's fine. And then literally did nothing to try and mitigate the situation just to make you more comfortable. That is seriously so disgusting and in my opinion, so uncalled for. This is a massive red flag. This is proof right here that he's going to push off everything that you say and he's willing to let it slide that his brother was making creepy pictures about you. So no, you did not overreact and I don't think you're the jerk. I think the brother in this situation is absolutely a giant weirdo and you should not be subjected to that creepy guy in the slightest. My girlfriend of four years kissed another guy at a concert while she was blackout drunk. And now that I've found out, I'm so confused and angry. I seriously am so stuck and I don't know what to do. Here's what happened. My girlfriend last Saturday had the opportunity to go to a concert with a friend that she recently met. And this would be the first time that they would hang out together. My girlfriend had also never met the rest of the group and she had only met this one girl. The plan was for them to leave to the city after 10 o'clock p.m. The concert required a ticket and they only had one left. It would be my girlfriend, her friend, her friend's boyfriend, and the boyfriend's friend. My girlfriend called me and we spoke about it. I said I trusted her and that I also hope that she has a lot of fun. Now, admittedly, I was nervous about the whole thing, but what's a relationship without a bit of trust, right? Well, sadly, throughout the night, she decided to drink way too much, so much so that she blacked out. She didn't know how or when she got home when she woke up the next day. Long story short, when she was blacked out, she cheated on me. She went off with him to the bar, drank with him, grinded on him, let him hold her and kissed her, and she apparently said that they should just act like they're together tonight. Then, towards the car ride back, she made out with him before puking all over the car when they were driving back home. And this is all in the same car together. Ever since I found this out, I've been numb and I just need some opinions here. I just don't know what to believe. She says she was blackout drunk and couldn't remember everything that happened. I mean, not once has she made me feel insecure in the relationship, so I'm honestly so torn. How is it that you remember everything except for cheating on me? You remember going in, being with your friend, but completely blacked out everything you did to cheat on me? She was very drunk though. I've seen her when she gets really drunk, and I just know that she couldn't have been able to consent either. The friend group needed to walk her up the stairs to her apartment. Apparently, they spent more than half an hour trying to find which door was hers, since she was incapable of answering any questions. One side of me is saying that she was vulnerable and someone took advantage of the opportunity and no one was there to even help her out. The other side of me is saying that she's lying and knows exactly what happened and was aware about her cheating on me. I mean, am I being too nice and letting the love I have for her blind my judgment? At the same time, I'm so mad that it happened. And I mean the scenario in general. The fact that someone kissed her and was all over her really turns my stomach. I feel mad and sad and really confused. Everyone has a different opinion on this. One may say she put herself in a position to be that drunk, and these are the consequences of her actions. That when you're drunk, you act on your inhibitions, and you still 
make those choices even when you're drunk. We don't excuse the actions of a drunk driver, so why should this be any different? They are still choices, and we should still be accountable for them. One may also think that it's dangerous to think like that, to say that maybe it's what she wanted anyways, but that's indicating that she was even in the right mind to consent. I'm just not sure if that's fair either. I've heard stories of those girls who get blackout drunk and did unexplainable things, thus countering the idea that it was some kind of inhibition, but rather just a situation where someone was being taken advantage of. That this idea that alcohol exposes who you are is simply a sentence that is being regurgitated and really only changes who you are and your ability to make decisions. In this case, my girlfriend, I think, really was taken advantage of. But honestly, I really don't know what to believe, and at this point, I don't know what to do. This is a really scary situation because your girlfriend clearly should not be drinking that much. Like, honestly, if I was in your shoes, I would be like, okay, listen, for this relationship to work out, there's no way you can drink like that ever again. You have cheated on me once, and I don't want that to happen again. Like, your girlfriend acted like she was single. She acted like this guy she hooked up with was her boyfriend for the night. And sure, she was drunk, but she made the choice to drink that much. And that, in my opinion, is such a big problem, it's only going to get in the way of your relationship. So I don't blame you for being upset, and I don't think you're overreacting here. Your girlfriend has a lot of things that she needs to account for, and I really think some serious change needs to happen. Otherwise, this relationship is going to be incredibly hard to keep going. Am I the jerk for not allowing my fiancé to playfully smash a cake in my face at our wedding? Here's what happened. I want to start off by saying I absolutely love my fiancé. We've been together for over five years. We own a home together. We have two dogs, and we live a happy life. We have had a rocky relationship at times, though, and are definitely not perfect. He is the oldest of two brothers, and sometimes when we get playful, he will take it just a tad too far, and maybe he'll push me a little too hard, or tickle me when I'm frustrated, stuff like that. As we started planning our wedding, he off the bat talked about how excited he was to put the cake in my face. I was a little apprehensive about this, but he seemed so excited. I mean, I'm not having makeup done professionally, and I figured it was just one moment of the day, so I said sure. Well, as time has gone on, I have seen the TikTok tragedies over cake in the face at weddings, and I began to get a little bit worried. With the way he is, I'm worried that he will take it just a little bit too far. When I started to feel this way, I talked to him and told him I would want to practice beforehand, to which he seemed a little frustrated about, but said sure and that he understood. He promised he wouldn't get it in my hair or on my dress. But really, how can you control that? I have kept trying to get him to practice, and he never wants to. He will do it without the cake, but never wants to with the cake or whipped cream because he doesn't want to get sticky, which is like, wouldn't that be happening to me at the wedding as well? Anyways, every time we do it without the cake, I swear he will touch my hair, to which then I will have to call him out on it. Well, today was Thanksgiving. He started talking about this with my dad, and I mentioned I really didn't want to do it unless we practiced. Once again, he did it without anything, and he ended up touching my hair. So I called him out, and my dad said that we have whipped cream, so why not just try it out? So I said sure, but I also said please be careful. Don't get any in my hair or on my clothes. I showed him where I was okay with it going on my face, and he went to do just that. Well, he put way too much on, and I told him, see, even that was too much. And then he smashed the rest in my face. I guess I moved because it got all over my hair, all over my eyebrows, and some of it on my clothing. I immediately started crying, and I ran to the bathroom. He came in and apologized, and cleaned me up while he was also saying that he was sorry, and that I had moved, and that's why he got it on me. He was really nice and cleaned me up, but it just frustrated me. And I said we are absolutely not doing that at the wedding, because if he couldn't control himself now, he definitely wouldn't at our wedding. I was upset for like 30 more minutes, and he finally said, I understand if you don't want to do it anymore. I just want you to be happy. I said that we will see, but if we do it, we have to practice properly, and not at a family holiday. So, as of right now though, my answer is a hard no. But I need to know, am I the jerk for the way I reacted? What should I do? Okay, I can't believe you're even considering still doing the cake thing at your wedding. You clearly had a bad reaction to it. He got it on your face and your hair and on your clothes. Like seriously, that's how it's gonna go. It's not gonna be this gentle thing. This is gonna go literally everywhere. And your reaction to a practice run was to start crying and run to the bathroom. So seriously, to the original poster, do you want to run away crying at your wedding? Because I can 100% see this happening at your wedding. Like I really don't think 
think it's going to matter how many times you both practice this. This is simply not a good idea based on the fact that this really upset you the first time. So why not just cut it out of the ceremony altogether and just avoid it altogether? That, in my opinion, would be the smartest thing to do. And I think everybody could be happy with this if you just make that decision. Because clearly this upset you. And I would hate for this to happen on your wedding day. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.